Welcome back to the channel everybody. Work on the Super M continues. Project for the day is going to be tightening this clutch pedal up where it pivots on its shaft. When I took this apart you'll no doubt remember that thing was flopping all over the place. So I've cleaned everything up and the shaft is not worn too badly. We have about 25,000 steep wear right there and then on the reverse side the other thrust face were probably about five thousandths is all over there so shaft is pretty hard most of the wear is in the cast iron of that pedal so when we line everything up get all of the wear surfaces stacked on top of each other you can see we're about an eighth of an inch worn when you get over to this area right here that's why that pedal is flopping around so bad so you can still buy these shafts new. They're about $70. I'm gonna try and repair this one. I'm just gonna build this up with some weld out here and then turn it back down. I see at one point some kind sole has been grinding on this midway through. Usually that is to provide a little bit more clearance where the front of that PTO shaft comes up and engages with the back of the counter shaft and the transmission. It's been my experience. You don't always need to make yourself more clearance there, but I think somebody was trying to make their job a little bit easier at the time. So. It's ugly, but it's not going to set me back at all, so I'm just going to leave all that where it is there. Once we get the shaft welded up, I'm going to have to look at boring that hole out, making it round again, and bushing that back down to size. But I'm just going to do, I'm just going to build this up with the wire feed. That's going to be plenty sufficient. It took this thing about 70 years to get worn this badly. I'm probably the last generation that's ever going to mess with this tractor anyway, and after I'm tipped over and gone, well, nobody else is going to worry about it, and I bet I'm not going to put enough hours on it by then to wear this that bad anyway, regardless of how I do it. So what I'm probably going to do is I'll do a bead right here to start the build up, and I'll go 180 and just do another sacrificial bead over here, even though most of that's going to get turned off with the lathe because it's not worn. I don't want to concentrate too much weld in one area and risk warping this thing after it cools. So we'll just try and keep the stresses even, get that thing built back up. So the welding went fine. I have the shaft centered in the south bend lathe. We have the steady rest out here also centered up with the chuck and no detectable run out out here beyond the weld point so the heat management was a success. So now we can fire this up. There's just something about the tick of an old flat belt driven tool. I love it. You hear that lacing coming around, tick, 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 tick. Just sounds right. With the unevenness of this weld, I'm feeding this pretty slow, at least until we can start getting it cleaned up a bit. Squatch Senior here, uh, rainy day today. I did a little bit of work on the 212 grader radiator. What I had to do there is the belt uh, adjusting sheaves and stuff behind the fan on the water pump were froze solid and run an extremely loose belt. So I took that apart. These guys will be seeing that in an upcoming film. Got things cleaned up, everything working properly and parts ordered. So. Uh, as long as I'm waiting on parts, figure it'd be a good opportunity to get into the Super M brakes. As you can see, I've been doing some work on these. Uh, sandblasted all the castings up, put a coat of Gliptol and everything there. There was a lot of rust and scale and stuff. 
got uh, one of the actuators put together one disc in there this is a two disc mechanical linkage setup so you got a mechanical linkage disc brake set up on this unit two discs per side this piece will go on top of here and the way this system works is linkage from your brake pedal uh, fastens into here pulls on this system and as that pulls on the system it will with the balls in there as you can see it's a ball and ramp system it will expand the actuator so that's how this disc brake system works on here I'm not a real fan of it but uh, if you keep everything in tune working no grease and oil in there like this thing had they do work to an extent so let's get this stuff put on the tractor okay first thing we do got the seal lip all greased up o-ring all taken care of yes Carefully put this in there, kind of get the bolts, kind of watch your seal lip, you don't want that there to snag anything. There's an O-ring there that's got to slide in. Okay, first piece on. Okay, I've got one disc on the splines. Here I've got the other disc and the actuator assembly installed in the outer hub. And we'll see if we can get this all on there. trick is going to be is get that other outer disc spline lined up. Okay, so far so good. And let's see if we can get the bolt started. Okay, we'll finish getting this uh, tightened up and we should be done with this side. And one thing I should mention too, five bolts hold this on. One bolt is a little shorter. That goes in here. You can see it's machined down a little farther than the rest. Okay, get the dust cap on and we should be done with this side. Okay, side two, we'll get this side uh, finished up and uh, we'll have our brake systems done. Well, there that wasn't too bad should have a pretty good system going there so uh, a couple more pieces on getting closer to paint all the time okay so it's actually a couple of days later and I'll get you over here by the milling machine catch you up on what's been going on you can see the shaft turned out very well we're true inch and an eighth diameter all the way out now and I had the heat up a little hot with the welder you can see some of my undercut marks in here this application those are not going to matter for anything so I'm just gonna leave them alone as senior would say those will just hold more grease so we're uh, we're good on the cross shaft now this is where I skipped ahead a little bit and I apologize but I'll catch you guys up the next step was to take the egg shaped hole that was in this clutch pedal and make it back round and as you can see it is perfectly round again the way I chose to do that was to use this fly cutter in the milling machine. I clamped the pedal in here through this vise. I had some blocks out here, secured it, made sure nothing was going to vibrate, and basically just advanced this cutter bit out in small increments until I was able to bore a clean round hole all the way through the pivot area of this pedal.
Now, the reason why I was in such a hurry to get that pedal trued up that I didn't take a lot of time to film it was because I was unsure of the bushing material that I had on hand. I was suspecting I may need to order a special size bushing because I had some of this stuff, which was inch and an eighth ID, inch and five sixteenths OD. And from the measurements I did, this thing was gonna be really close to not cleaning up at inch and five sixteenths. And sure enough, put this in here, you can see, we're not gonna get any kind of a press fit on that. If I was 5,000 smaller, this would have been probably just perfect, and that's all the stock that I had. So I was glad that I went ahead and just got that thing milled out and didn't waste a lot of time on filming because I ended up having to order a bushing and I wanted to get that order in before the weekend had started. So hopefully just kind of make things go a little bit faster. So here is the bushing I have. It's inch and an eighth ID, you can see fits on the newly built up shaft perfectly. And we are inch and three eighths on the OD. So what I'm gonna do is put this in the lathe, turn the outside diameter down just enough that I can get a good press fit inside that pedal. Plus this bushing is two inches long. I only need about an inch and three quarters to seven eighths of it to fill the hole in that pedal. So I'll get this turned down to dimension, get it installed. All right, and with that, the pedal has been bushed. So you can see in there, I drilled a hole for the grease fitting and I lined it with the fitting, unlike what happened to that poor front bolster over there where they did not line that hole up properly so you couldn't get any grease in the darn thing. And you might be able to see, now I'm doing this holding the camera with one hand because my base is still broken. I usually put it on that blue pole that's over there so I can have two hands free, but until I get a new case, this is how we're gonna do it. You can see I cut a light grease distribution channel that goes right around the mid bore of that bushing just to kind of help distribute that a little bit. And I finish honed it when I got done. Now I tried to give myself just light enough press fit that the ID was not going to crush in at all, but it still did a little bit. It would go on the shaft, but it just had a little bit of a tight spot. So I finished up with a light hone on there. About five minutes with the drill, had it fixed right up. So tested on the shaft, we're on the built up area. Nice and smooth. That's all the pedal wobble we have now. That is not bad at all. Just enough clearance for some grease in there. So much better than that eighth inch of play that we had before. I think we have a usable setup now. Transitioning to the other shop now, we're back at the rear end. I'm gonna get this cross shaft put in. First, we're gonna talk about the seals. The IH number was a 354514R91, and it crosses to the SKF11170. Specs on that if you should be interested. So, those seals are in. You can see that one right there. And then on the other side, that one in right there as well. So at this point, I'm going to install the cross shaft, not to put the pedal or any of the brake linkages on, just to get another set of holes plugged in this rear end. There and there. Fairly simple install, just feed it through. I've got a very light coating of grease on it just so that it's not completely dry on the seals. It does a pretty good job of guiding itself through to the other side. And now to finish up, I have this pair of thrust washers here. They go on the shaft over the seal. There is kind of a counter bore in there for them. And they just basically protect that seal lip from the pedals and everything else that bear directly up against them. So put this one on this side. 
there we are. Now, just to wrap the video, let's test fit this clutch pedal on there, make sure everything still seems like it's where it needs to be. So, again, doing this one-handed because I have to hold the camera, get out of that glare. Our travel limiter stop down here looks like it's hitting the same witness mark as before. Check up here at the top cover. Lining in really well with the edge of that. So, get her on this axle here. Pretty happy with how that clutch pedal fits now. Like I said, a lot less wobble than before. So, we're calling that a success. Pull this back off of here. I'm gonna clean this clutch pedal separately from this back end. Plus having it out of the way is gonna help me access those areas a lot better. Sorry about that glare coming in here. It's just getting to be that time of day, but I think uh, I need a handle on this thing. I think we're gonna wrap the video right here, guys. That's probably enough for this episode. As always, thanks for watching, and as I've said plenty of times before, on to the next project.